My name is Garrett Johnson. I'm originally from Arlington, Texas. Uh, I've been the last two years here in Rome, and before that I was living in Peru. I'm uh, part of a movement or a community called, it's a Society of Apostolic Life, Life where it's a community of consecrated laymen and priests, and it's called the Sodalicium of Christian Life. And it's, it's a community that was born in 1971 in Lima, Peru. And basically the idea of it was a group of young men that got together in Lima and said, we wanted to change the world. That was the basic premise at the beginning. We, we are, um, and then during that time in Lima, there's a lot of problems with terrorism, with Marxism, and there's a very complicated time. And they said, we want to change the world, but the answers that we've seen right now aren't enough. And they came to the conclusion that the only thing that was really going to be able to change the world was Christ. And so they said, let's dedicate our entire lives to spreading that message and to seeing what we can do. What is the new evangelization? The new evangelization is us saying yes to Christ today. And that's saying yes to Christ with who I am, with what I have to give, uh, with all the experiences that I've had in my life. And, but the new evangelization also has this intuition of the fact that there are a lot of Catholics who say they're Catholics, but they understand very little. And I've even had the experience of many times of speaking with people and even trying to give certain answers, maybe speaking about the catechism or some of the basic responses that we tend to give. But I realized something, and it was that many Catholics have no idea of what the questions are. And so in that moment, I started to understand that the new evangelization is going back to these people and saying, do you understand what we're talking about? What is the question? What are the subjects that are at the bottom of this? The intellectual studies have to become part of our apostolate for Christian life. And I think many times, speaking with friends from the United States, for example, uh, and also many seminarians, I've seen a tendency, uh, which maybe isn't that, they're not even that aware of it, of kind of opposing kind of more intellectual, philosophical, or, um, these kind of ideas to a more pastoral uh, apostolate. So many people think that to really do apostolate to youth, you need to have pizza, music, and some skit that makes them laugh, which I'm fine with it, and I've done these kind of things for, for years. But I've started to realize that if we don't start giving, once again, teaching our youth how to ask questions, and teaching them not only these written down answers, but asking, accompanying them when they ask these questions and helping them not only to understand the catechism, but to see reality in its entirety, that we're not giving them what they really need to respond to the challenges today. Um, so one of my postures, one is just studying, so working on myself really, besides my prayer and trying to convert to become a better person. And another thing that I'm working on, which is what one of my passions is a website called Catholic Link. And Catholic Link basically is a, is a website it's a group of young, almost all of us are university students, and we come from all around the world. Um, and we've met on Facebook or by various means, and it's really it's interesting to see how we've come together. But the idea is to find material, uh, audio, visual material, that can be used for the apostolate. Um, so on a basic day-to-day -day thing, it's to look for things on YouTube and Vimeo and all these kind of things and say, let's find videos that are interesting and that might, might, might not necessarily be Catholic or explicitly religious and say, okay, what type of messages can we pull out from this? And the idea again is that when you go to youth, you have to present something that's interesting. So again, you have the ideas of pizza and music and all these kind of things, which is excellent. But you also have to teach them how to themselves draw some content out of it, how to reflect upon it. So you find these videos that are interesting for them. And again, may, aren't like imposing some religious boring message that they, they consider to be boring. And say, okay, what are the criteria? What's behind this video? And you start inter interacting in a type of dialogue. And then another thing that we're working on in this project is uh, digital animation. So our hope is to start producing, we've produced two videos, one about Pope Francis and one about St. John Paul II. Uh, we have this really cool editor named Khan Vines from Ecuador who is starting to produce some really cool material. And it's been exciting to see in com the comments on Facebook, for example, people saying, Catholics can do high quality animation products. And it's like just celebrating it. Because again, one of the parts is, one of the essential parts of new evangelization is going to where the people are at, especially the youth. And unfortunately, better for better or worse, youth spend, I think, eight hours on Facebook every day. So figuring out ways where we can say, look, it's not the best that they're there, and I don't really like Facebook that much, but if they're there, I'm going to go there. I'm going to figure out a way that Christ's message can, inter can, can speak to them in that environment. I would just have one story that, um, that also speaks about my own experience in Christian life. Is I, did, I spent a year on a program called National Evangelization Team in the United States. And there, basically I dedicated a year to working with, uh, with youth. And you went to a, a Catholic high school or Catholic church, 
and every day you woke up, you prayed, you went to this church, 80 kids come running and on, running through the door and you had to start making friends with them. And during these retreats that we gave, that could be from two hours to three days or something like that, we had small groups. My experience of small groups, I hope changed the lives of some of them, but it certainly changed mine. What was the experience at the bottom of it? It was, I need someone to talk to. Is that many people today, with all these means of communications, not only don't have that many opportunities to talk about real questions that they have, about their experiences, about their difficulties, their joys, their thing, about who they are, is that they don't even know how to talk about it. And it's very uncomfortable for many people, and especially in the families. And the families, which should be the place where we learn to do these kind of things, have no idea. I mean, family, unfortunately. So one of my experiences of doing a POSIT was just to listen, to be able to engage in a conversation where they could discover who they were. And the interesting part about this was that time and time again, the best way to do evangelization is to show people reality. I don't have to impose this, I mean, I don't have to come up with this spectacular um, reflection, although many times it does help. But I just need to say, look at who you are. Look yourself in the mirror. Let me help you to do it. Look at reality, look at the environment, look at the creation, look at our society, and figure out how to reflect on that and see what the true reality really is. And if you do that with an open heart and a willingness to also have to sacrifice certain things, nine times out of 10 is gonna lead you to Christ. And I wanna be there for you to, to accompany you in that process. But that experience was, was something that really touched me and taught me a lot about how my, my own path towards conversion needs to be. I think what's been the greatest suffering that I've had to, to undergo to give testimony to Christ, and it's been the suffering of not being in control of my own life and really trusting in Christ and saying, God, you're good, you love me, and that's enough. I'll go where you want me to go. Part of my community, one of our, one of our fourth vows, or what we, what we promise, uh, is to be 100% available, 24 hours, everywhere, anywhere you want me to go. And that's implied for me, leaving behind my country, my family, as my friends. Obviously, I still have contact and I go back every now and then. And also my culture. But even on a deeper level, it's my own egoism. As, as saying, Lord, I will leave behind uh, my own want, my capriches, I mean, these kind of things, and I will go where you want me to, to do testimony. I don't have any doubt about whether there's hope for the world today. Um, what sometimes I have a bit more doubt of, doubt of is whether people will be able to realize that there's hope for the world today. And I think especially with youth, a bit of my experience here in Europe even has been that amongst youth, my experience has been more here youth in Rome and youth in Italy, recently anyway, is that um, there is this sensation of kind of depression, that there's no way out of kind of this mediocrity or kind of gray uh, suffering, kind of numbness that everyone kind of experiences. and. But with this, I think that the message of hope is we have to realize that it's a very radical one in the sense that it's very different from optimism. In the sense that optimism is, hey, don't worry, kind of ignore your problems. It's the, let's not think about it. You know, let's go get a beer and just kind of ignore it or, or let's uh, go watch some stupid movie and laugh so we can forget about all the things that we're going through and everything's going to be all right. But it's just kind of this false... And naive kind of way of going about it and you're really just escaping from reality. Whereas hope is where you look at reality right in the eyes and you, you don't go away from it, actually you go deeper into it. And that implies going deeper into the suffering as well as the joy and finding out what's at the bottom of it. And again, to find hope, I don't think you have to invent something or I don't think you have to hear, I don't know, some, listen to some motivational speaker 24 hours a day. I think you have to look at reality. And in reality, there are these signs of hope everywhere. If you would like to participate in the next program of Cast Out Your Nets, sharing your testimony of apostolate and evangelization, visit our website at www.eukmommy.org for more information.